Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I hope you guys are doing really great this morning, and so we're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the tropics. So we've got a new tropical storm that developed this morning, which is Tropical Storm Katia, and that was previously known as our 12th depression of the season. Additionally, we have our disturbance of Africa given a high chance to develop and is likely to become a hurricane and could be a problem for the Caribbean in the long term and then we've got our other systems out there that we want to briefly talk about as well and before i go into details please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update all right guys and so we're going to briefly take a look at our uh cyclones out there after which we'll zoom into the caribbean to see what's happening and then we'll go on to that new disturbance that we might see develop into our next name storm and hurricane of the season so we can see what is left of franklin and also jose so jose is being absorbed by franklin we also have italia which is trying to regain tropical cyclone status so it is still a post-tropical cyclone out there in the vicinity of Bermuda and uh, there is still that tropical storm warning which is in effect for the islands so it's likely that such conditions will be experienced as we head through today uh, those periods of strong winds some heavy rainfall and that can trigger flooding in some areas we've also got GERT GERT is a very resilient cyclone guys because it was off the map but its remnants lingered around for a pretty long time and now here in September it's popping back up again so uh, we've got Gert out there not a problem for anyone and there is our newly formed Katia so let's go ahead and take a look at Katia uh, the code forecast for it and here we can see that it is sustaining winds of 40 miles per hour and move into the north northwest at 13 miles per hour so this is not going to be a problem for anyone and conditions should get increasingly unfavorable hence much intensification is not expected of the system at all as we zoom into the vicinity of the Caribbean and surrounding areas, there we can see that there is some thunderstorm activity in the vicinity of the Bahamas, Cuba, and also in parts of Jamaica, eastern parishes, and uh, off of Haiti right there. So there is quite a bit of moisture in the area helping to enhance this activity we see. And a bit of thunderstorm activity is also noted in the vicinity of the Cayman Islands. Over in Central America, there is still that tropical wave in the area, so especially as we head to this afternoon, there could be a lot of heavy rainfall and thunderstorms, which uh, may trigger flooding across some areas. But as we look over into the Eastern Caribbean, there isn't a whole lot going on this morning, maybe some passing showers at the most, but it should be a pretty sunny day for the most part. Uh, for the Lesser Antilles, including Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, even going down into the Guyanas, the ABC Islands for Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Virgin Islands as well. So uh, there's nothing crazy in the area right now. And let us go ahead and take a look at our disturbance. And so right now as we look at the satellite imagery, here we can see that it isn't organized, but it is produced in some substantial showers and thunderstorms. And so as it continues to the west, it will encounter a more conducive environment that will be allowing for development and intensification of this and all models are expecting that it will be developing into something. Some of them want to take this into the Caribbean or very close to the Caribbean. Others want to keep it well out. And we're going to be taking a look at what a few models have to show in a moment. But the main determinant of the track of this is going to be that subtropical high pressure system. And so high pressure systems in the northern hemisphere, they rotate in, uh, winds within them rotate in a clockwise fashion, a clockwise direction. And so that is why uh, they result in that westward motion of these uh, tropical cyclones whenever they are pretty much strong out there. So uh, tropical cyclones can't just move through them, so they have to move around them. And that is why we oftentimes see them making their way to the west and then curving up to the north and then moving out to the northeast. So a stronger high will result in a more westward track. Meanwhile, a weaker high will result in somewhat of a more west-northwest westward or northwestward track so let's go ahead and see what models have to show and we're starting out with the gfs so the colors that we see these greens yellows reds they indicate the precipitation rate and those squiggly lines that we see they're called isobars and they join areas 
of equal pressure. So let us see what GFS has to show. There we have the forecast time. So as we're going to be heading into the early part of the new week, there we have our low pressure area developing, heading west and intensified. We see that value decrease in, which represents the minimum central pressure. So once that goes down, it suggests that our system is intensifying. And also once we see those uh, isobars being a lot more compact. So eventually GFS has this approach to the Caribbean as a hurricane, potentially uh, a Cat 2 hurricane heading on to Cat 3, making its way through the vicinity of Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, and then uh, not moving into the U.S., but somewhat parallel in the east coast so this is pretty interesting here and uh so gfs wants to take this into the caribbean that is suggesting that there is going to be that stronger high pressure area out there as we head on to the euro model euro is expecting that as we head to next friday a week from now we're going to have a tropical storm being close to the caribbean but the model is not actually expecting that it will be bringing any significant impacts as we head to tuesday the 12th there we can see that it is showing that this is going to be well north of the Eastern Caribbean and away from the Turks and Caicos Islands and Bahamas and we see a pressure of 967 millibars again hurricane expected as we head on to the icon model also going a week out from now to saturday the 9th here we can see that it is expecting that we're going to have this system moving into the vicinity of the leeward islands so uh the icon expected that hey we're going to have a tropical storm moving and bringing some impacts the canadian model though is not expecting that we're going to have much maybe the other bands bringing some rainfall here and there but uh showing that the system is going to remain north of the eastern Caribbean and also showing development of other waves out there. So very interesting here. And uh, I would say that if you're in the Eastern Caribbean, you definitely want to keep watch. It is important to note that we don't know exactly where it's going to go. It's still pretty far out and there can be many changes between now and next week. Even though there's a pretty good picture, even though we're seeing some consistency, there can always be changes. And so that is why I'm here to keep you guys posted on all that is happening and all that is expected with it. But let's go ahead and move on to conditions. Here we have this dry air map. So those areas of more of those shades of oranges and reds indicate a lot uh, denser dry air. And uh, this is something that helps to inhibit significant development and intensification, but it is going to be clearing up as we have this disturbance making its way through the area. And then going on to the sea surface temperature map, very warm waters to support development. So at the minimum, tropical cyclones require around 26 degrees Celsius. And we see that 29 degrees Celsius isotherm across most of the main development region. And of course, in parts of the Caribbean, of the southeastern states and in the Gulf, it is much higher in some spots. So conditions will be favorable to allow for development to happen those upper level winds should also be conducive and uh, of course i'm going to be keeping you guys posted now this is not yet designated as an invest but i am expecting that it will be uh, sometime later today it will become invest 95 l but not there as yet at least as of the time i'm recording this update so that is it for now and i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be otherwise